So in this lesson, we're going to talk about using the right word. As you might imagine, it's very important on the SAT, and they're very, very picky. And they're picky in three different ways. First of all, you have to make sure you don't confuse similar words. Second of all, that you don't use the wrong idiom. And third, that you don't use the wrong verb. These three rules are tested most often in the identifying sentence errors portion of the test. Now let's go into detail on those three rules. Now the first rule is don't confuse similar words. Let's start by looking at this example here. Jason began drinking several protein shakes per day in preparation for his wrestling match, but the new regimen seemed to have little effect on his performance. Now you notice the word effect is underlined, and on the SAT it probably will be, along with of course several other words because that's how it'll show up in the identifying errors portion of the test. So what you need to do is check and see effect. Is that the right word? Now you probably recognize effect as one of those words that lots of people confuse with effect, with an E. And sure enough, that's the problem here. Effect is wrong. This is generally a verb. And we need a noun. We need the noun effect. So if this were underlined on the SAT as part of an identifying errors question, you'd want to pick it because effect is wrong and effect is right. Let's look at another example. Watson and Crick, the co-discoverers of the structure of DNA, are eminent scientists. Now, eminent's a pretty obscure word, but hopefully you can get familiar with a lot of the words that are going to be tested on this portion of the test by checking out the bonus materials, where a lot of these word pairs are listed. So in this case, imminent is not the right word. Imminent, spelled this way, means about to happen, and the scientists are not about to happen. Rather, you want the word eminent, spelled like this. Eminent means famous, well-known, important. And I should mention that this is not a spelling test. They're not going to give you words that are spelled one letter off. Rather, they're going to give you a pair of words that maybe look kind of similar and test if you know the distinction between them. Let's look at a third example here. Emma was deeply offended that her father would leave her an angry note that inferred she had left dirty dishes in the sink on purpose. Again, we have a word underlined that is not used in the way that's intended. Inferred means figured out based on hints. And the note did not figure anything out. Notes can't figure stuff out. But it did hint or suggest. So instead of the word inferred, we want the word implied. Inferred and implied are words that people often get confused. So yet again, this is uh, related to the word implied, but it's not the right word for the sentence. So that's the first thing you need to remember. Don't confuse similar words and check them out in the bonus materials so you can get fluent with the pairs. Now the next rule is that you can't use the wrong idiom. Let me clarify briefly what an idiom is. An idiom is just the way you say something in a certain language. So for instance, in English we say the mountain is covered in snow with the word in. It happens to be the case in French that you don't use the word in, you use the word of. And it's not that it's more logical in English or more logical in French, it's just the way you do it. And so a lot of times on the SAT, they're going to test whether a word is used or an idiom is used properly or if something is written more like maybe a foreign speaker might use it incorrectly. And I want to point out that it'll often be with prepositions, words like in, of, from, at, that idioms are tested. A lot of